Good evening and welcome to Kini News. Amno's Pontian MP Ahmad Maslan has been nominated as the government's sole nominee for the vacant Dewan Rakyat Deputy Speaker post. Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob's government has nominated Pontian MP Ahmad Maslan as its sole candidate for the position of Dewan Rakyat Deputy Speaker. When contacted by Malaysia Kini, Amnos Padang Rengas MP Muhammad Nazri Abdul Aziz confirmed the nomination. The Deputy Speaker position fell vacant after Amnos Pengerang MP Azalina Othman Said resigned on the 23rd of August. Azalina said she hoped her resignation could spur a reset of the upcoming Dewan Rakyat sitting. She had also proposed that an opposition candidate be given the post, but this proposal had been rejected by Nazri. Previously, he was quoted by Sina Harian as saying that the deputy speaker position still needs to be filled with a government candidate and they would not make way for the opposition to fill it. Nazri said the opposition should not be demanding the position when it didn't make the same offer when Pakatan Harapan was in power. Meanwhile, Batugaja MP V. Siva Kumar has spoken out against Ahmad's nomination. In a statement, he said it was shocking to note that Ismail Sabri had reportedly nominated an accused who has been charged in court with corrupt practice and breaching money laundering laws as a candidate for deputy speaker. He noted that Bursatu President Mohidin Yassin had vowed not to work with kleptocrats and questioned if that position has changed. Ahmad, who is also AMNO's Secretary General, is presently standing trial for money laundering and providing a false statement to the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission over 2 million ringgit he received from then-Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak in 2013. Iskandar Putri MP Lim Kit Siang has cast doubt on the rationale behind the government not wanting to put up a motion of confidence against Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob. Now, this came following the remarks by de facto law minister Wan Junaiki Tuanku Jafar on this issue yesterday. Iskandar Putri MP Lim Kit Siang has questioned de facto law minister Wan Junaidi Tuanku Jafar on his claim that the Agong had consented to not have a confidence vote in parliament. In a statement today, he said if the Yang Dipertuan Agong had changed his mind and considered not to have a confidence motion as claimed by Wan Junaidi, then why was it not stated from the very beginning? Instead, he said the most bizarre statement was released by the Attorney General Idrus Harun. On the 4th of September, Idrus had said that a vote of confidence is not necessary as the Yang Dipertuan Agong had already appointed Ismail Sabri. Yaakob as Prime Minister as per the federal constitution. Idrus had argued that a vote of confidence would actually undermine the Agong's institutional powers. Lim also commented on the omission of the vote of confidence motion in the parliamentary agenda next week. According to Lim, the possible confidence supply reform agreement between the government and the opposition had suffered a grievous blow due to this. He added that the only reason the government is shunning the confidence motion was that Ismail Sabri feared that he would not be able to secure the support of 114 MPs in the confidence vote and while Ismail Sabri could avoid a confidence motion, Lim questioned if he can avoid other votes in parliament amounting to votes on his legitimacy as prime minister. DAP Secretary General Lim Guaneng also commented on the motion of confidence. He called on Dewan Rakyat Speaker Azhar Azizan Harun to explain, among other things, why it was not on the agenda. Now, before we move on to those other things, Parliament is about to start soon and we need your help to keep the government in check. So support the channel so that we can continue to keep everyone accountable to you, the voters. Check out the link in the description below to become an ally to the free press. DAP Secretary General Lim Guan Eng wants Dewan Rakyat Speaker Azhar Azizan Harun to explain the absence of two motions on the Dewan Rakyat agenda. He said Azhar must explain why the motions relating to a confidence vote on the new Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob and an election of a new speaker is not on the parliamentary order papers for when parliament meets next week. In a statement today, Lim said that Azhar and Attorney General Idrus Harun were both present at Istana Nagara on the 17th of August when the Yang Dipertuan Agung decreed during an audience with heads of political parties that the vote of confidence must be held. He said unfortunately the Attorney General had chosen to openly defy and disobey the King by stating openly in an unsolicited public statement that there is no need for a confidence vote because it would nullify the King's powers to appoint a Prime Minister. He added that similarly Azhar had also chosen to follow his brother, not in words but through an indirect action by not advising the new government to submit a vote of confidence. On the election of a new speaker, Lim said that AMNO President Ahmad Zaid Hamidi had submitted a motion proposing Azalina Othman Syed as the new Dewan Rakyat speaker and questioned why it will not be debated in the Dewan Rakyat. When contacted for details, Lim said he has been made aware of Zahid's motion. Zahid's office did not respond to a request for comments. Previously, Azhar had admitted that his office has received several motions calling for his removal as speaker. Azhar said they were forwarded to the deputy speaker's office to avoid a conflict of interest. AMNO's president, Ahmad Zahid Hamidi, has responded to inquiries and comments that he received about AMNO's position on the new government. 
UMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi said the current government is only temporary until an absolute mandate can be obtained from the people in the next general election. In a statement today, he said, as decided at the UMNO Supreme Council meeting and guided by the Yang Dipertuan Agong's recommendations, once the country reaches herd immunity, a general election must be held to form a stable government that is elected by the people. He said this was among two major mandates entrusted by the UMNO grassroots to him and the party leadership through the UMNO General Assembly. The second was that the party would not compromise in wanting to contest all its traditional seats, including the seats it won under the Barisan National Ticket, but whose lawmakers had defected to another party. Zahid added that he also received many inquiries and read various comments which asked about AMNO's position on the cabinet formation and the appointment of former Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin as the NRC chairperson with ministerial status. On this, he said the party has taken a stand in supporting the appointment of Ismail Sabri as the Prime Minister. This means the party leaves it to the wisdom of the Premier in making decisions or the policies he felt appropriate in helming the administration. He said the Prime Minister has the constitutional power and it is his responsibility to ensure the government functions properly and does not repeat the mistakes of the previous government. He added that he would ensure the party continues to be the eyes, ears and voice of the people on the issues concerning their well-being and the prosperity of the country. Good Morning Jishwar is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink made in Malaysia. It is suitable for those who are lactose intolerant. Research made by local universities found that more than 90% of our Malaysian population are lactose intolerant. Lactose intolerance can cause bloated stomach and diarrhea. Good Morning G-Sure helps to improve the immune system, reduce the risk of illnesses and helps to improve general well-being and strengthen our bodies. A happy family starts with a healthy family. I'm selective, healthy and going strong at the age of 52. It has to be Good Morning G-Sure. Former Prime Minister Najib Razak met with current Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob yesterday. The economy and the COVID-19 pandemic were among the topics discussed during the hour-long meeting. Former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak is prepared to contribute towards Malaysia's economic recovery and help with strategies to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic. This is according to Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob. In a post on Facebook, Ismail Sabri said he received a visit from Najib yesterday. During the hour-long meeting, they had discussed domestic and foreign economic policies as well as strategies to fight the pandemic. He added that Najib is committed to contributing time, energy and ideas as a team for the sake of Keluarga Malaysia. Meanwhile, Najib said he had spoken frankly during the meeting. He said they had discussed the economic situation and he had told Ismail Sabri that Malaysia's economy is in crisis. Najib said that from a macro level and broadly speaking, we are already far behind our neighbours and Malaysia has not been attractive to foreign investors since 2018. And at the micro level, which involves the people, many don't have confidence in our economy. There is also anxiety about their needs, income and job security. He hoped his suggestions, strategies and experience could be of use. Najib was finance minister from 2008 and prime minister from 2009. He held both posts until BN's defeat in the 2018 general election. Gymnasiums will be allowed to open as soon as proper guidelines on ventilation requirements are developed. This is according to Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin. The update came after several lawmakers questioned why cinemas were allowed to open but not gyms and outdoor sports facilities. Youth and Sports Minister Ahmad Faisal Azumu has questioned Health Minister Kairi Jamaluddin over the recent directive to reopen cinemas and not gyms and outdoor sports. In a post on Twitter today, he questioned why gyms and outdoor sports were still not allowed. He added that the Youth and Sports Ministry had proposed that outdoor sports and gymnasiums be allowed to open and hoped that the Health Ministry would support it. Yesterday, the government said they had decided to reopen the entertainment and art sectors in all states beginning this Thursday, including indoor performance activities, cinemas, museums and art galleries. However, the facilities would only be opened for individuals who have completed their COVID-19 vaccination and the number of people allowed is still subject to a certain capacity that has been determined by the authorities. Meanwhile, former Youth and Sports Minister Syed Sadiq Syed Abdul Rahman also shared Faisal's sentiment over the issue. He said if entertainment can open, that means sports should be allowed too. He added that both industries should be allowed to open with clear SOPs in place and a vaccination prerequisite. Said Sadiq said he was not against the reopening of the entertainment sector, but wanted the government to help others before it was too late. Kyrie later addressed the issue saying that the health ministry will be jointly developing some ventilation guidelines with the National Security Council that has to be adhered to. He said they had to stress on certain ventilation requirements due to the nature of indoor fitness centres and were working on it urgently. 
Malaysia recorded 19,733 new daily COVID-19 cases, with Penang reporting a new record number of cases. The Health Ministry reported 19,733 new COVID-19 cases today. Sarawak has the highest number of new cases with 3,100, followed by Selangor with 2,989 cases. Penang reached a new record with 2,474 new cases today. Meanwhile, Science, Technology and Innovation Minister Dr. Adam Baba has announced that the COVID-19 walk-in vaccination program in the Klang Valley will end after the 15th of September. He said the decision was made after taking into account the small percentage of eligible vaccine recipients who have yet to get the COVID-19 jabs as well as the low presence reported at vaccination centres. From September 16 onwards, Klang Valley residents who have yet to get vaccinated can get their COVID-19 vaccines at selected health clinics which will be announced later. As of yesterday, 69.6% .6 of the total adult population in the country have been fully vaccinated. 20.8 million individuals or 88.9% of the adult population have received at least their first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. That's a wrap for Kini News this evening. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook to get the latest news headlines. If you'd like to support the independent media, please do consider a subscription to malaysiakini.com. When you're heading out, please don't forget your mask and when you can, do try to stay home. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching and as always, stay safe Malaysia.